people, all right, people, welcome back, welcome back. Yes, summertime is on us in the UK, so it's time to do some maintenance on the bike. Uh, like you're saying, I've just had those recent track days, so I thought, you know what, let's just do some checks on the bike and the engine, do some little bit of dripping down, some bit of self-education, learn some shit about the bike, how to do things, how not to do things, and I will tell you what we're going to be doing today. Yep, you guessed it, we are going to clean some carbs, or carbs, or intakes, or throttle bodies, basically whatever shit goes on in there we're gonna go and have a look take it all apart seeing if we can take it apart see if we can completely get the airbox removed off get inside it take a look and take it from there so let's get going so after about 45 minutes to an hour of pissing about and stripping it you know what a pain in the ass is unclipping all these and remembering there's like thousands of them but anyway loosen the airbox so the airbox is currently floating uh, there's a big hose at the back over there that's keeping it connected i ain't got no tools to unclip that but i've just blocked off just the intakes of the cylinders so the airbox all i want to do now is just take the lid off completely so i think there's just loads of these all the way around because i can get to it now so removed all the little screws. That one was a little bit of an asshole to get to because this thing's bloody in the way. And now in theory, I should be able to just, if I can just grab it from this. Oh. There you go, look at that. Actual proper access. Take the lid off, do it properly. Right, time for a little inspection. Okay, shall we start with the top of the lid and see what's going on outside, inside. So on the side here, I think this is a tip angle sensor. So when the bike goes on the side or something, I don't know whether it's a cutout or something, I'm not sure. We've obviously got the air filter on the top. Obviously I'm running the NWR. On this side, that's an actuator. It has some hoses connected on both sides. So you've got one here and there's another one down there. Not really sure what that does, but if you look on the inside, there's a uh, that's what the actuator is connected to that down there i believe is the map or the intake or the air pressure sensor or something where's that oh that's that plug on the top there on the underside i've got this shit here whatever that is and it's the same on the front there look see it's got that's the top done anyway so right let's move her over to the creme de la creme right look at this all set out with my little support in it because i obviously don't want to crink the fuel line um so fuel line comes in obviously there it is there's the other end of this goes all the way around comes into here feeds into this whatever that thing is and then splits into a t-pipe one go i'm guessing that's an injector and then there's the other injector with the plug that runs goes back into two actually this thing controls the throttle along this i guess it's called a butterfly or something isn't it these two plugs here quite important control this these open and close to let air in and out depending on percentage of the throttle that you got going and uh, so the aim is just to have a look around here and just clean these out and obviously i'll clean the air box on the inside so why are we doing this one i think just general maintenance good to keep things clean i don't know whether it's two three years ten thousand twenty thousand miles but i've had it for two years now so i thought you know i might as well start che start checking things while well, i'm getting used to doing this on and off and taking the bike apart so again that also builds up my confidence of working on the hyper and i Obviously, if I can do it, then you guys can do it. So I'm going to show you how to do it now. The, grime, the dirt and grime can build up over time. It can lead to a, or create a rough surface. And then you think you've got air and fuel coming over there. It could disrupt the air, fuel, flow, turbulence, all that shit. It could impact it. I ain't no physics flow scientist. I haven't got a Venturi intake system. Like you're saying, it could be a reason or not. I don't know. It could, it could be one of those contributed to the stalling or the poor idle, um, just general tiny bit of rough riding, rough idling, sorry. It's just something that you can look at and check yourself. It's relatively easy in that sense to clean. I think I'm going to, I ordered this stuff, STP Carb Spray Cleaner, professional series. Cleans carburetors, linkages, and automatic chokes. So I think all I'll do is give this a shake, blast this, blast this, uh, give it a little clean with a rag or a little tissue. I guess give it a chance to dry and properly air out. And then I'll probably do something with the same underneath here, clean the front in time. So giving it a shake, I'm going to spray it a little bit in each around, let it soak for a bit and I'll spray again and then I'll get a little bit of tissue and clean it and let's just see how dirty it is. Let that do it sit there and do its magic. Wow, it smells proper strong. Don't be smoking around this, it's proper flammable. So I've got my little kitchen towel, I'm just gonna slowly clean around this. This is a clean one, so I'll see what how dirty this thing gets. These weren't too bad. I mean, the tissue isn't showing too much crap on it. Um, but you know, the surface of this, not very smooth. It feels like 
dimply. I don't know whether it's supposed to be smooth. Obviously, you can't really tell. You can see some little pits in it. Same with uh, this one, the front cylinder, the one that tilts down at an angle towards the front of the bike. This was relatively okay as well. The surface of this feels smoother than the surface of this side. This side definitely looks a bit more pitted, whereas this side still does, but it, it feels a bit smoother. Uh, again, the tissue isn't so bad. Is Look at that. And that, all this, is just cleaning everything around it. Now, I don't know whether that's from when I've, so I went off-roading and I had a fall. I think the bike's only been down one or two times in its whole career, you could say, but that's a lot of turd in there, isn't there? And I haven't even got to the underside of it, so let's uh, let's see how clean that side so is. So we've given the underside of this a clean. This is where there was a load of crud crap and on the back there, so I've just sprayed and cleaned that up. Let's do a quick check on the old uh, tissue. That's how filthy it was. Just doing everything in the inside. I'll clean the front of it as well a little bit. So what I'll do now is I'll just let that air dry for a while, half an hour, maybe an hour or so, just to make sure it's all completely gone. I'll right, put this whole shit back together. back together hope you like that little quick video putting it back together oh, it took ages 40 odd minutes that did let's just do another quick test see if it starts hey works fine works a treat it's not that hard to do work on it take your time take pictures video it over and out people over and out